YouTube, Chris with journals, comics, and pop culture. I have not talked about CGC in a very long time, and I know CGC has been a hot subject for many reasons over the last few months or so. I'm going to talk about them today. And for those of you, now I know my demographics on my videos, so a lot of you guys are older than me, so you probably understand the thumbnail, but for those that don't, do a little <laughs> research. But does CGC just simply not care about your comic books, which, I mean, translate to the question, does CGC not care about their customers? If you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Uh, let's get into this, folks. Now, I want to go into this stating that, for those that don't know, I approach everything like a journalist. I am not necessarily, I will express my opinions, but I'm going to, you know, look at the facts of matters and ask you guys to use your critical thinking caps to come to your own conclusions. I'm not here doing some conspiracy theory stuff and, you know, sensationalizing a topic just for clicks and views. I really want to understand myself what's going on, so I'm reporting on it, and then I want to hear all of your guys' opinions in the comments below as well so we can have a, a, a deep a discussion, a deep dive discussion into these things that are important to us as, as collectors. So now uh, I'm going to bring up two posts about CGC. And the first one here is from this individual, Ted, who uh, had an issue with a, a reholder with this uh, Amazing Spider-Man 194 first appearance of the Black Hat. So let's go ahead and read what Ted wrote. I was just notified by CGC that they damaged my ASM-194 during reholdering. It has gone now from a 9.0 to a 7.0. They offered me $25 compensation. I'm thinking that is not enough. What would you guys uh, think would be fair for your information? Uh, it had to be reholder due to damage to the slab during shipping from CGC, but that did not cause any damage to the comics. Apologies, I wrote the wrong amount. They offered $15 for compensation, not $25. So, let me kind of rehash everything that's happened. So this individual had this raw comic book, ASM 194, First Appearance of the Black Cat, sent it in for grading. It, it got a 9.0. Once all of his order got graded, they shipped them back to Ted. The case was damaged in shipping. So I'm assuming that CGC said that he contacted CGC and CGC said, okay, uh, send it back to us. We are going to reholder it to you free of charge. And while reholdering it, they damaged the book. And as it was clearly stated, there was no damage during uh, uh, the shipment where the actual original slab got damaged. And they want to offer him $15 compensation. So uh, there's a couple of things going on here. First off, these books getting damaged and shipping once they're graded. Now, look, you're always going to have issues like that. I mean, for the most part, when I get books back from CGC, they're, they're packaged really well. And we know that a lot of, uh, whether it's UPS or UP, USPS, some of these people be throwing boxes like crazy, man. And, you know, maybe that was unavoidable and it, it wasn't CGC's fault, hopefully. I'm not going to hold CGC uh, to blame if they said, look, ship the book back, we'll... we'll reimburse you for return shipping and, and we'll reholder it free of charge if they did that kudos to cgc that's the way that it needs to be handled now let's let's go to them actually damaging the book now now again look cgc probably goes through hundreds if not thousands of books a day and everyone's human everyone is human but I'm going to tell you one thing, and I've said this in videos before with stories like this. I mean, I did a video on the, the Golden Age. I think it was the Golden Age Captain Marvel book that or the Wiz comic where they ripped the cover off the book. It was like a 9.0 uh, Wiz comic. My thing is this. I'm, I've been collecting for over 35 years now. And I, I've damaged books like as a kid just from reading them, you know, you don't take care of them, you leave them out. But as a professional collector, outside of getting a couple tape tear, tape pulls, you know, early on in my days, and, and uh, yep, I had a couple tape pulls, um, 
and experimenting in my pressing. I've, you know, caused some damage to books in my experimenting when I got my first press and I was a noob. Ever since, though, I've grown to what I feel is an official capacity of, of comma book presser. I clean books, I press books, I handle books. I have never damaged a book. I mean, I've even, I mean, the most that I've ever done was if I'm bagging and boarding a book and I put it in the bag and board and for some reason, like the book slips out of my hand and falls. I mean, I, I've done that a couple of times if I'm just nonchalantly doing that. But even then, if I can, I, I don't even know if, if it damaged the, the books at all. If I was in a situation where I knew that I was handling books for other people, I would be even more careful than I am now. And I just don't see how books can be can be damaged. Now, I don't know what the damage is. Like, we don't know if it was a bent corner we, or they ripped the cover. We don't know. But we do know that it went from a 9.0 to a 7.0. That, that's severe. That's a severe drop in grade. So I can imagine what could, well, I mean, I can imagine what could happen, but I got, I can see the ideas of what, what the possibilities could be. Right. I just, I just don't see that happening that, I mean, these comics, once they're received by CGC, according to my knowledge, it's all hand, they're all, it's all handled by human beings by the hand. There's no automated process to my knowledge. How can somebody damage a book like this? Now, well, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's give CGC the benefit of the doubt and say, ish happens. Life happens, human error. We're going to reach out to the customer and re we're re going to reimburse them. $15 from a 9.0 to a 7.0. So let's go ahead and look at what this book's doing on the market right now. If you look at what a 9.0 is selling for, we have a fair market value, which is a current rolling average of 350 with the most recent sell happening uh, just a few days ago for 375 higher than that rolling average. What is the average for a 7.0, 141, the most recent sell, 150? That is more than double the value for a rolling average of that book. They should be offering at minimum, at minimum, according to this, according to these numbers, $150. At minimum. Money, also, also, I would, I would reimburse them all of the fees for grading that book. Reholster it. Give it the 7.0 grade. Send it back to them. Give him all of the fees back. Basically grade that book to him for free and give this customer the $150 value. I mean, or even maybe like $125, whatever. It, in my opinion, it, it would have to be at least $100. But this is a rolling average. I mean, we're not just looking at the last sales. This is a rolling average. That's what I would do. For CGC to offer this customer $15 is a slap in the face. It's a slap in the face. And I hope that somebody from CGC is watching this video. This is a disgrace. And this is why I asked this question. Does CGC care about their customers? But every, every company, every company is, will never, unless, unless you are, unless you have a monopoly on an essential good like water or electricity. You are no bigger than your customer's perception of you. And just with all the issues going on at CGC, I, I have to come to an assumption that CGC thinks they are. The, the quality control, I thought they were making moves over the last couple of years to combat that. But now with everything going on, uh, it, it, it's a problem again. And then the way that they handle each individual situation is alarming to me. This customer is due much more, and this is a slap in the face. And for them to even offer this can truly impact public perception. 
Now, I'm going to go ahead and look at one more um, example here of a, of a recent CGC situation. Now, this is, of course, kind of a, a, a on the opposite ends. And I've been a, I've been a, a I don't want to say a victim of this, but, you know, I've, I've had this happen on a 9.8. So this individual says, the worst I've personally seen. Edit. Because so many people have asked, I didn't submit this or buy it. Well, technically I did. I won it in a stacker. I also checked the original picks and it seemed fine. So guessing it's a shipping issue. It was packaged securely, but you can't prevent inside sleeve moving around. So what had happened, because um, I read the original uh, post before this individual changed it and edited it. So this book got a 9.8. And, um, you know, obviously you guys, if you guys could see here, you could see, let, let's pull up. Um, you guys could see right in there. Look at that. Clearly, uh, this is way too much damage for a 9.8. And I do believe the individual was saying that that damage wasn't there prior to it getting um, graded and slab. So, and then what he's talking about now was like, I mean, how do, how does this happen in the in the inner well in the sleeve? You know, now we know all we know. There's the banana gate going on. Big shout out to Swaggle Haas for uh, reporting on that nine point nine newsstand. Um, that that's a whole other quality issue, obviously, that's damaging books. But so this, if, okay, in, in my humble opinion, this could be a situation where a book gets sent in, it gets graded, and it is a nine point eight, right? But then in the process, after they come to the conclusion that it's a 9.8, they damage it. But it ends up in the inner well, in the slab, and sent to the customer anyways. So, whereas the other situation is they damaged it, they noticed it, and called themselves out on it, contacted the customer, but then offered a crap reimbursement. Or... Or this could be a situation where did this book get damaged once it was holstered, put in the inner well, and in the slab? Either or, though, either or, it's it's a problem. It's a problem. But like I said, this individual stated in the original post that this damage was not there before. And I've watched a few videos as of late. Now that I, now that I've been watching videos again, of people, uh, Mint Hunter, Mint Hunter, I I think was one where he's talking about doing um, uh, grade bumps. I think he said that I'm. He was like, I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist. This is not who I am. But is something going on to where they're just fixing the, the uh, the census? Or I mean, was this spine tick not there before? You know. I had a book that I felt had a, um, it, it was uh, basically parallel to the spine, like a spine roll that I didn't notice before. So was it once they received it, was it sitting? Did they have it sitting in a way to where it in turn received that defect while sitting in CGC's possession? What is going on at CGC? And I don't want to hear anybody talking about a company like EGS who has defied all odds and actually, even though they're still a very, very small company compared to CGC and even CBCS, they have still surpassed all odds and are still doing their thing. You know, they got their proprietary case and there's obviously there's been some issues. Everyone makes mistakes. But this is what I was talking about in a video that I made just about eight months ago when a certain YouTuber, uh, you know, was focusing on EGS and saying, well, look at, look at what's going on at these big companies. So again, I'm not here to assume anything. I don't do that. We as consumers, though, are almost forced to, to assume 
when we don't have all the facts or the transparency of what's going on. And when we see when there is any type of transparency, the transparency shows CGC to almost want to neglect and not take care of their customers. $15 for a 9.0 down to a 7.0, 150 difference in value. What is going on at CGC? Folks, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. For me, I stopped my, uh, my membership with CGC this year. I only sent books into EGS this year, and I can't wait to get them back. I should be getting them back soon. And again, I'm not no shill for EGS. Um, I have a working relationship with Tony at EGS, president of EGS, but um, I'll never sugarcoat. I never, I never say anything. Um, I'm not, I don't have any like sponsorship with EGS. Um, I will speak my mind to any company. I mean, I still want to support CGC. I do, but I am scared. I would be scared to send any books out to them right now. And that's that's one reason why I canceled my my membership. Not saying I'll never send books back to them, but right now it ain't happening. For so many reasons. I want to know your thoughts in the comments below, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Be well, and until next time.